Shalom. Shalom. I'm your brother Mark. Brother Long Wa. Shalom. Shalom. Pray that you're all out there doing well today. Um, pray that the videos being, you know, edifying and that you're out there learning. Pray that you're doing the will of the Most High. And first and foremost, we always want to give all honor, glory, and praise to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's a higher by Hashem, Yeshai, Kodash Wah. You know, just having the knowledge of the Most High being given so much, you know, understanding in these times and just keeping us on a on a righteous path to make sure that we don't veer off and then indulge in some of the things that the world powers is, is financing for our destruction out there, you know, and with with all the destruction that that financing also comes confusion, you know, financing through giving you historians that go up against the history of the Bible but you know making companies that take all the artifacts out the earth and destroying them but at the same time putting a few in certain museums just so just so you know so you you don't really know what's out there if you're not really digging and searching but some things out there that, that do exist you know given given, you know, proof that these places, these landmarks, places in the Bible that exist, um, you know, still in our history, you know, they've tried to hide the truth for so long, but through the Spirit of the Most High, He's awakening, you know, His elect and the Israelites worldwide to, you know, bring forth this truth and bring forth some understanding and tear down all the lies, you know. Um, so, today, we want to go into our Bible lesson on the history of the Israelites in Egypt. You know, we see our people today gravitating to this Egyptology madness and that whole religion and saying that, well, you're dealing with religion. You know, we're dealing with the spirituality of Egypt, but that's a religion. Can't prove nothing. Ain't never been there. You know, you, you just want some of your favorite entertainers one of these black power brothers is just giving you poison because you see what's going on in the, in the churches and you see that that's madness. You see it's a lot of hypocrisy going on. You see it's no law. You see they got sodomites on the piano up in there. You know, they, you see they got, you know, uh, pastor eating all the pork chops, you know. Granted, there is some that's, that's really trying to do the will of the most high, you know, but are they really proving all things? Are they really digging for for the truth concerning the Most High and, and digging for clues and answers? Or are they just stopping at these stumbling blocks they got for you like Egyptology and all this other madness? You know, Egypt is done. Egypt is done and it, it, it's not coming back. Let's get that. Let's get Isaiah chapter 30 through the Spirit of the Most High. You know, Egypt, Egypt's not bringing nothing we can't go to Egypt, you know, for help. You know, <laughs> the, the 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 real Egyptians aren't even there no more. You know, you got you got Arabs in the land today. You have you know Ishmaelites in the land today. There's no, they're not even running their own museums. You know, and all those dark skin statues and 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 and, and tombs that you see, dark skinned people, and they're they're not there. You know. So, so bring that out. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 30. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. Because when you're not having the most high spirit, you out here, you're not keeping his law. So you out here indulging in sin, whether that's in ignorance or not. you full of sin. When you go against the God of Israel, you think certain things is okay. You think fornication is okay. You think eating whatever you want to eat is okay. You think not keeping this Sabbath day is okay. You think doing Christmas and all the satanic holy days, 
holy days is okay instead of the holy days. Finish read. Verse 2. That walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. You trust in the shadow of Egypt and you trust in the pharaohs of Egypt, huh? Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust and your in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. So much confusion when you dig dealing with people that want to wear these onks and, and, and holding on to Egypt. So much confusion. Like, what are you talking about? And you just read the Bible and they just, no, 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 no. But they come with all this stuff, could barely pronounce the name of, the, of these pharaohs and don't know no dates. Just taking what the so-called Esau and the Europeans is, 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 is giving you, the Edomites is giving you as history and as authors, and then come around and say, that's a white man's book. Well, all, well what about your other books? D -d 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 -who, who's printing those? So, Egypt is your confusion. Ain't no law. The Most High, he, he, he wasn't feeling Egypt. Get, get Leviticus chapter 18. The most High ain't feeling Egypt. Bring that out from the top. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 18. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. You're not supposed to do nothing that they're dealing with in Egypt. Uh -huh. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall ye not do. We shall not do anything that they're dealing with. Anything they was doing, we weren't supposed to do that. We was a holy people set, set apart with a, with, a, with a holy law from the Most High. What are some of the things they were dealing with? Go to uh, verse 22. Jumping over to verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. So we don't deal with what the Egyptians was dealing with. You know, Man on man, woman on woman. We do as thus saith the Lord. We deal with the things that's bringing life, not death. Ain't no life coming from that stuff. So our lesson, you know, the history of the, of, of, of our people, the Israelites, Yasharala, in 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 Egypt. Let's bring that out. Let's see how it started. Let's get Genesis chapter 37. Bring it out. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 37. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being seventeen years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah, and with the sons of Zilpha, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Mm -hmm. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children. Because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. So the brothers was mad at him because he had a dream. They want to know, well, what you saying about your dream? Finish reading. And he said unto them, here, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field. And lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and made ob obeisance to my sheaf. Mm -hmm. And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words and he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and said behold i have dreamed a dream more and behold the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me and he told it to his father and to his brethren and his father rebuked him and said unto him what is this dream that thou hast dreamed shall i and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth. What you saying, Joseph? Uh huh. And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the same. And his brethren went to feed their father's flock and the and the Shechem. Sorry. And Israel said unto Joseph, 
Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, I will send them. I will send thee unto them. And he said unto him, Here am I. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren and with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron and came to Shechem. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, They are departed hence. For I heard them say, Let us go to Dathan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dathan. Okay, so he's going to find them, right? Let's jump it down to 25. Verse 25, And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked. And behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and, and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. Mm -hmm. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brethren were content. Then there passed by, then there passed by Midianites, merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. Mm -hmm. So this is how he got there. You know the brethren, the the the. the the 12 tribes of Israel, right? The brothers sold him into the hands of the Ishmaelites. And that's how we first got into Egypt through the patriarch, through one of our forefathers, Joseph, right? Finish reading. Verse 29. And Reuben returned unto the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit. And he rent his clothes and returned unto his brethren and said, The child is not, and I, whither shall I go? And they took Joseph's coat and killed the kid of the goats, and dipped the coat in the blood. And they sent the coat of many colors, and they, and they brought it to their father, and said, This have we found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. And he knew it, and said, It is my son's coat, and evil beasts have devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. And Jacob rent his clothes, and put sackcloth upon his loins. And mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him. But he, re but he refused to be comforted. He said, For I will go down into the grave unto my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him. And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto, unto Patiphar, an officer of Pharaoh's and captain of the guard. So this is when they first sold him. Go to verse 30. Go to uh, chapter 39. Let's bring that out. Let's finish. Let's see how what, what was going on when they first sold Joseph to the to the to the Israelites. How was he really going down? Genesis chapter 39. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt and Pot Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that, he, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house. And all that he had, he put into his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not what he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife 
cast her eyes upon Joseph. So now she's choosing on Joseph. She's choosing on the Israelite man, Joseph, right? In the dream. And she said, lie with me. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master, what if not what is with me in the house? And he have committed all and he have committed all that he hath to my hands. There is none greater in thine house than I. Neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness? How can I go do this wickedness, man? He's he's he, he's an honest man with me. He's giving it all to me. Uh huh. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against the Most High? And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. Let, 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 let's hold that right there, because see how Joseph, he wasn't worried so much about about just. The adultery part uh, or just with 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 her and her husband he was worried about sinning against the most high he knew who his blessings was coming from he knew i can't do this against the most high the most high taking care of me they done sold me i could be dead the most high preserving me for something God. in his dream verse 11 and it came to pass about this time that joseph went into the house to do his business and there was none of the men of the house there there within and she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. Give it to me. Uh huh. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. And it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth, that she called unto the men of her house and spake unto them, saying, See, he hath brought in a Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in unto me to lie with me. And I cried with a loud voice. And see, and we see this type of stuff going today. See how this woman is mad because he won't deal with her. So now she's coming to put a story. We see this stuff happen all the time, all in the news with our people, right? We, we, we see this stuff happening. Finish reading. Verse 15. And it came to pass when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. And she laid up his garment by her. By, by her until his Lord came home. And she spake unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant, which thou hast brought unto us, came in unto me to mock me. And it came to pass, as I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled out. And it came to pass, when his master heard the words of his wife, which, he, which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant to me, that his wrath was kindled, and Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison. So we see that he put him in prison. Let's go to verse, let's go to chapter 40. He put him in prison because of what she said, you know, false accusations, right? Bring that up. This is uh chapter 40. And it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was brought against two of his officers, and the chief of the butlers. And against the chief of the bakers, and he put them in he and he put them inward in the house of the captain of the guard, into the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them, and they continued a season inward, and they dreamed a dream, both of them, each man his his dream in one night, each man according to the inter interpretation so like you of his dream the butler and the baker of the king of egypt which were bound in the prison and joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them and behold they were sad and he said so like and he asked pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward of his lord's house saying wherefore look ye so sadly today and they said unto him we have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to the Most High? Tell me them, tell me them, I pray you. And the chief butler told his dream to Joseph, and said to him, In my dream, behold, a vine was before me, and in the vine were three branches, and it was as though it but as though it budded, and her blossom shot forth. And the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand. 
And I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup. And I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said unto him, This is the interpre interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head and restore thee unto thy place. And thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand after the former manner when thou wast his butler. But think on but think on me when it shall be well with thee and show kindness, I pray thee, unto me and make mention of me unto Pharaoh and bring me out of this house. Get me up out of here. Uh -huh. For I indeed... For indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews. And here also have I done nothing that they should put me into the dungeon. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said unto Joseph, I also was in my dream. And behold, I had three white baskets on my head. And the, up, and the uppermost basket there was of all manner and bakes me of Pharaoh and the birds did eat them of the basket upon my head. Mm -hmm. And Joseph answered and said, this is the interpretation thereof. The three baskets are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thy head from, uh, from off thee and shall hang thee on a tree and the birds shall eat thy flesh from off thee. So Joseph's interpreting the drink for him, huh? And it came to pass the third day, which which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto all his all his servants. And he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. And he restored the chief butler unto his butlership again. And he gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker, and Joseph had interpreted to to them. Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. Okay, so as we see, he was interpreting dreams when he was put in this dungeon, right? And of course, you know, Pharaoh ended up bringing him out, giving him prestige and honor, and 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 he 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 loved that he saved uh, the land of Egypt out of the famine to come, right? So we want to go. Let's go to chapter forty-two. Let's see how did these Hebrews look. Like what? What? What did these Hebrew, these Israelites look like? These twelve tribes of Israel who were among these these Egyptians, as we know, was men of color. Why does it matter? Because we want to know who the Israelites are today. And the Bible says that the covenant is still with the Israelites, and they don't know who they are, so they need to know who they are, know they are special people, and come back to the Most High God's law. Because if they come back to the law, they won't fall for the programming of hip hop. They won't fall for the drugs. They won't fall for the 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 adultery. They won't fall for the fornication. They come back to the law. They know they're holy people and then this kingdom is done. It won't thrive off of our destruction. Bring that out. It's the book of Genesis, chapter forty two. Now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Jacob said unto his sons, Why do ye look upon another? And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither and buy for us from thence, that we may live and not die. This is what our forefather is telling his sons, the Israelites. Go down there because a famine is coming. Uh -huh. And Joseph's ten brethren went down to buy corn in Egypt. But Benjamin, Joseph's brother, Jacob sent not with his brethren. For he said, lest preadventure mischief befall him. And the sons of Israel came to buy corn among those that came. For the famine was in the land of Canaan. And Joseph was the governor over the land. So they didn't know this. They didn't know that Joseph was running the show. They thought that he was dead by now. Uh -huh. And he it was that sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. And Joseph saw his brethren, and he knew them, but made himself strange unto them, and spake roughly unto them. And he said unto them, Whence come ye? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. And Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew not him. And Joseph remembered the dreams which he dreamed of them. And now, how could they not know who he is if he's not looking like an Egyptian just like them? If these so-called Egyptians and Joseph was, was looking like Edomites, if they was looking like Tom Cruise, 
Wouldn't they have known this is their brother? How would he be able to blend in? Finish reading. And said to unto them, Ye are spies, to see the nakedness of the land ye are come. And they said unto him, Nay, my lord, but to buy food are thy servants come. Mm -hmm. So they didn't know. They, did, they didn't even know they was dealing with their own brother because he looked just like the Egyptians. Let's get that. Let's get the the uh, the and let's get Ham in the dictionary because we know Egypt in Hebrew is Mitzrayim. We know that the Mit Mitzrayim, the Egyptians, are a son of Ham. They're Hamites, just like Canaan is a son of Ham. The Egyptians are sons of Ham. Ham, Shem, Japheth that got off the boat, and we know that the Israelites come from Shem. Bring that out. Uh, this the, this is Ham. And the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. The youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of eight persons to live through the flood, he became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes. Uh huh, but not the Negroes. So he's a progenitor of the dark races, but not the Negroes. Not the Negroes. The Negroes are Israelites. So that's why they was able to blend in. When you when you calling yourself, they want you to say, "Oh yeah, from Africa. Yeah, you're from Africa. Ethiopians is from Africa. They not Israelites. They Cushites. They're not Mitzrayim." And so if we was looking like them, well, who are the Negroes? Well, who are the Negroes today? Because we know the Negroes have woolly hair. We know who the Negroes are. And what what was Paul looking like? Let's get the Book of Acts. The book of Acts chapter 21. Because Paul was mistaken for some for something too. What was Paul mistaken as? Get Acts chapter 21, 38. This is the book of Acts chapter 21 and verse 38. Art thou art not thou that Egyptian mm -hmm. which before these days made us an uproar? Are you not that Egyptian, Paul? Are you Egyptian? You, you look you look kind of Egyptian. And what were, what were the what were the the, the go, go to Acts 13 and 1. What were the Israelites called too? What were the Israelites called? 13 and 1. It's the book of Acts, chapter 13 and verse 1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon, that were called Niger. Niger means black in the in 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 a, in a concordance. Niger means black. So these Israelites were dark-skinned men. These Israelites were dark-skinned men. Let's get the book of... Let's get uh, Genesis chapter uh, 49. Um, this is the book of Genesis chapter 49. Get verse 28. Verse 28. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is and this is it that their father spake unto them. This is what Jacob. This is what our forefather Jacob was speaking to them on the, in the last in his last days, huh? And blessed them, every one according to his blessing. He blessed them, and he charged them, and said unto them, I am to be gathered unto my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephraim, the Hittite. And the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, which is before Mamre, and the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought with the field of Ephron the Hittite for possession for of a burying place. There they buried Abraham and Sarah, his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah, his wife. And there I buried Leah. The purchase of the field and of the cave that is therein was was from the children of Heth. And when Jacob had made an end of commanding his sons, he gathered up his feet into the bed and yielded up the ghost and was gathered unto the people. Mm -hmm. So we see, of course, he ended up revealing himself to his brethren, dwelling amongst the Jacob. Jacob was having when you go back and read the story. But the Israelites... You know, we, we were there. We were there in Egypt. You know, we were there in Egypt. 
more proof. If you go to our, what's our video? Uh, five Bible artifacts. Showing you the, the Israel Stilly, the Minertha Stilly, right? Bring that out. The Israel Steel, Steely of Marina Pa, discovered by Petri at Thebes in 1896. Mm -hmm. So when they tell you there's no artifacts about the Bible, about the Israelites being in Egypt, uh huh. This is in a uh, Cairo Museum. In the, in the Cairo Museum, in Egypt. You can go physically touch this. So when you go taking that out there, and you say that Israel lies didn't exist and the Bible doesn't exist, they gonna look at you like you crazy. You standing, you in it. That's like someone telling you, "Oh, America don't exist," and you standing in America, or 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 these presidents didn't exist. Bill Clinton didn't exist. What are you talking about? You you, you in the land? You right here? You can see it. You in North Africa? Israelites can't look like Tom Cruise. Who have got sunburned? Now, let's go back to Genesis uh, chapter 50. Start that from the top. Book of Genesis chapter 50. And Joseph fell upon his father's face and wept upon him and kissed him. And Joseph commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father. And the physicians embalmed Israel. And 40 days were fulfilled for him. For so are fulfilled the days of those which are embalmed. And the Egyptians mourned for him three score and ten days. And when the days of his mourning were past, Joseph spake unto the, unto the house of Pharaoh, saying, If now I have found grace in your eyes, speak, I pray you, in the ears of Pharaoh, saying, My father made me answer, my father made me swear, saying, Lo, I die, and my grave which I have digged for me in the land of Canaan, there shalt thou bury me. Now, therefore, let me go up, I pray thee, and bury my father, and I will come again. And Pharaoh said, Go up, and bury thy father, according as he made thee swear. And Joseph went up to bury his father. And with him went up all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of his house, and all the elders of the land of Egypt, and all the, the house of Joseph, and his brethren, and his father's, and his father's house. Only their little ones and their flocks and their herds they left in the land of Goshen. And there went up with him both chariots and horsemen, and it was a very great company. And they kept 22. Jumping over to verse 22. And Joseph dwelt in Egypt, and he in his father's house. And his and Joseph lived an hundred and twenty and ten years. So like you. And Joseph saw Ephraim's children. Of the third generation, the children of Makur, the son of Manasseh, were brought up upon Joseph's knee. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die, and God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he sware to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you. And ye shall carry up my bones from hence. So Joseph died, being a hundred and ten years old. And they embalmed him. And he was put in a coffin in Egypt. Think they haven't been looking for that? Think they weren't? All, all these coffins they done found in Egypt? All these artifacts? But you know, the Israelites took those bones only when they was leaving Egypt. Let's get the book of Exodus. Because I had someone say uh, earlier... It was, Earlier this week to me, someone said to me, well, yeah, you know, well, the book of Exodus really came before Genesis. People just say stuff that don't know nothing about this Bible, don't know nothing about this heritage. Well, brother, Genesis is an overseer. How can you how can you say the Exodus come before the Genesis when they got into Egypt in Genesis? Exodus, they leaving in Exodus. So. When people just say stuff out there, that's why you got to study to show yourself approved.
because there's anti-Christ spirits out here that's trying to get you away from the Most High in Christ. Okay. They're trying to just tell you that this the most selling book of all time that's been here through all this worldwide chaos that's been translated in all these different languages the most sought out book how is it still here through all of this we know why hold that next let's get let's get uh uh second peters let's get second peters we know why this word is still here Pick First Peter's chapter uh, one and verse twenty-four. Kind. This is the book of First Peter, chapter one and verse twenty-four. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. Mm -hmm. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. This word is going to be here forever. The Most High said it, and His word don't come back void. Now. Let's get the book of Exodus. Let's start at chapter uh, chapter one, verse one. Through slide. Come. This is the book of Exodus, chapter one, verse one. Now these are the names of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt. Every man and his house, and his household came with Jacob, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali. Gad and Asher, mm -hmm. and all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were seventy souls, for Joseph was was in Egypt already, and Joseph died, and all his brethren and all the generate and all that generation, and the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them. Let us deal wisely with these Israelites that just keep uh, keep growing, just like Margaret Sanger, right? With the Planned Parenthood, let's deal wisely with them. Just like the juice they're pushing, let's deal wisely with them. Yeah, six months old. Yeah, we're ready for six months to take the juice. You want babies to take your juice. You're dealing wisely with us. Why? Because deliverance is coming. The Most High is waking up the 12 tribes of Israel worldwide. He waking up Gentiles. It's it's payback time at the door. The plagues is coming. You see the whole the whole financial system crumbling. You see all these wars, rumors of wars. Wars. You see all the different programming week to week. This police shooting. That that film that film that. Always cameras there to get your emotions to switch you here, switch you there. Keep you away from all this knowledge. Keep you from pointing to who's responsible for the worldwide chaos. Who's who's doing this? The new pharaohs of today, the rulers of this world that's running the, the, the bank system. The royal families, the ones running the whole campaign. Running the EU, the United Nations. The new pharaohs on the scene. The one that have the, the illuminated ones, the Illuminati. Not some just entertainers just doing a part in Satan's kingdom and all. The real players that's controlling it all. That can't be brought before no judicial system in this world because they own the judicial system. You, you go take your bar exam and they tell you that, that you qualify to come in a courtroom and handle business. Who could give judgment to the wicked? Only the most high can. Uh -huh. Go to uh, verse 22. Jumping over to verse 22. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter ye shall save alive. Mm -hmm. So they always trying to get those strong, mighty men. Nah, deal with those Israelites. They growing. We got to get rid of those men. Just like now. Getting rid of you, turning you into a sodomite. You look crazy wearing lipstick with, 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 with a mustache and changing your, your parts, and you a mighty strong Judah man. And you out here playing. Your big self wearing wearing crazy clothes and wigs and all that. What are you doing? And for you women out there that's that that's that that's befriending and liking this, don't you know that's just helping further the, the, the programming of ain't no good man left? Ain't no good man left. 
you six nine, you 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 ready? You could be a ball player. You a lineman trying to be a woman with big old hands. But that's enough of that. Let's go. Let's uh, go to Exodus chapter two. Bring it out from the top. It's the book of Exodus chapter two and verse one. And there went a man of the house of Levi, and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she and when she could not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes, and and daubed it with slime, and with pitch, and put the child therein. And she laid it in the fit in the flags by the rivers. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. And her maidens walked along by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him. And said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. This one of the Hebrews. This one of those Israelites. This one of those Hebrew children. Uh -huh. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew woman, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it, and the child grew, and she brought, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son, and she called his name Moses, and she said, Because I drew him out of the water, and it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, that he went out unto his brethren, and looked on their on their burdens, and he spied an Egyptian smiting in Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And when he and when he, when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said to him that did the wrong, Wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? And he said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Mm -hmm. Intendest thou to kill me? And thou killest the Egyptian? And and Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh. Because Moses had brotherly love. He seen his brother going through it. He said, man, look how they doing my Israelite brother like that. And that was before the law came, right, to Moses. So he just seeing the oppression. And he like, man, I'm tired of him doing it. I'm tired of this oppression. But no, what we do today, we do the opposite. We look at the pharaohs today like, I love your programming. Yeah, it's time to slide. I'm about to go kill my brother. That's how that's how our people look at it today. My favorite rapper got me turned up. They don't look at it like 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 that's their brethren. They don't know. They in darkness. Pharaoh, the pharaoh today got that witchcraft on you, financing you thinking that this Bible ain't real. Financing you owning your record label and owning the private prison system. We always gonna bring that up because we don't know who gonna find the video. And they need to know that you are you getting monopoly played on you. God. They got your mind. They got your neighborhood. They got your big homie. They got your big homie on your, on your, on your block that's giving you a history of the hood. This year, let me give you a history on the hood. How it go? Hmm. Let's get let's get Isaiah chapter thirty. Let's get Isaiah chapter thirty, uh, verse verse uh, eight. It's the book of Isaiah chapter thirty and verse eight. Now go write it before them in a table, and note it in a book. That it uh, nine. Isaiah thirty nine. Come. Verse nine. That this is a rebellious people, lying, lying children. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. We don't want to hear the law of the Lord. We want to do what, what, what someone else is telling them, uh-huh. Which say, to the seers, see not. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto, unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. We want to hear smooth things. We want to hear some lies from you, big homie and, and big bruh, uh-huh. Prophesy deceits. Get you out 
of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to seize from the We don't want to hear about that Bible. We want to hear about our favorite rappers. I mean, get that away from us. Here did the Holy One of Israel to cease, huh? Wherefore, thus saith the, the Holy One of Israel, mm -hmm. because ye despise this word. See, you despise this word. Uh -huh. And trust in oppression. You trust in oppression from, from the, 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 the Gentile Edomite rulers of this world. Uh huh. And perverseness. Uh huh. And stay there on. And you stay in this perverseness. You stay on all this madness that they financing to give you. Uh huh. Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall. So since you denying the Holy One of Israel destruction at your door, R.I.P. T-shirts in your neighborhood from 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 gun violence. You not raising your children up right. Into the laws of the Most High God. You ain't teaching them about the laws of God. You despise it. You want to do Egyptology. You want to keep going back to Egypt. You want to go back to Egypt and stay there. Back to the lesson. Let's get Exodus chapter 3. Showing uh, the, 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 the Israelites in Egypt. Our forefathers, the Hebrews. The 12 tribes of Israel. Scattered today. Calling themselves Puerto Rican. Calling themselves Negro. Haitian. Uh, what else we call it, D? A Jamaican, uh, Mexican, Dominican. Dominican, black. Calling yourself black. I'm a color black. Black. Yeah, I'm just black. Black power. All that. Coming back to your heritage, knowing that you were the, you were the ones that scattered. Uh huh. Bring it up. This is Exodus chapter three. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert. And came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Mm -hmm. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. What is this? Uh huh. While the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see. God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. This is holy ground right here. Take those shoes off. Uh huh. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. And the God of Jacob. So he's the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He didn't say no other nation because the Most High knew what was going on. He knew what today, while you have Esau, uh, the, the, the powers of, of the Edomites following Lucifer, you have the powers of the, the, the Israel. All the nations is following Lucifer, just with different names. Uh huh. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon the Most High. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians mm -hmm. and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites, and the Pez Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. So these were the Canaanite nation that we was going to war against after we was leaving Egypt. So he's telling Moses, I got plans for you and the Israelites. I'm bringing y'all up out of here. So it's the power of him that do, that do this. Uh -huh. And the nations of today, they know that power of the Hebrews is coming back. They're waking up. Put this on the news. Put those, put those Israelites on the news that's teaching hate. The ones that's not teaching all nations, that's not teaching his baptism, that's out there cussing. Get let's let's intercept this this awakening for those that that's just gonna buy into that. But no, there's some Israelites that's really doing that's doing Christ that's really dealing with Christ's doctrine, doing baptism, teaching all nations, not teaching just the white man is a devil. When you got a lot of our people that's destroyed way more of our people. You got some of our people that's 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 got down. With, with the rulers of this world's programming to help destroy their people. Mm -hmm. Just like in ancient times, you can read it, 1 Maccabees. You can read it, Old Testament. You always had the wicked of our people going and making a covenant with the devil. Finish reading. Verse 9. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, 
And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Those are his people. Uh huh. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee. That I have sent thee, when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve the Most High upon this mountain. Mm -hmm. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The Most High of your fathers have sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What is your name? For those Israelites out there with all these different names, what is your name? The most, the almighty power, what's your name, huh? What shall I say unto them? And the Most High said unto Moses, I am that I am. A higher, a shah, a higher. I am that I am, uh huh. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am, have sent me unto you. A higher hath sent me into you. In the Hebrew, because we was we Hebrews, and we, we we speak we spoke Hebrew, and we're trying to get our we're getting our heritage back. So we are using Hebrew because we lost our tongue, right? Get that. Get Isaiah chapter twenty eight because we lost our tongue. We speak in all these different languages in the earth today. Why? Because he stripped us of everything he gave us, from our language to our heritage to our clothing, the real culture. He stripped us off the real culture. Bring that up. Let's start at 9. Isaiah 28, 9. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Then that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So that's how you read the Bible. You get a little here, a little there to bring out the clues. If it's saying saints, you go to, you get the precepts, Psalms 50 and 5, to see who the saints are. Uh huh. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people. And he didn't, well, he didn't wake us up speaking Hebrew. He woke us up speaking English here in Babylon, so called America. Uh huh. To whom he said, This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. Mm -hmm. So with stammering lips and a new tongue will he speak to this people. So his people was speaking Hebrew, right? That's why we call up on a higher. Now, let's go to verse 15. Let's get 15 through 18. In Exodus, come. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verse 15. And the Most High said, Moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Most High power of your fathers, the power of Abraham, the power of Isaac, and the power of Jacob, have sent me unto you. He didn't say the, the, the power of Ishmael. Ishmael can't bring us nothing. Keep your Islam. We cool. Finish reading. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial unto all generations. Mm -hmm. Go and gather the elders of Israel together. And say unto them. The Lord God of your fathers. The power of Abraham. Of Isaac and of Jacob. Appeared unto me saying. I have surely visited you. And seeing that with that which is done to you in Egypt, and I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of Canaanites, and the and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. And you've seen all those giant statues that Smithsonian has has, oh, no, no, not giant statues. All those fossils in the ground, all those giant skeletons all throughout history that they cover up. Why are you covering it up? Because you want to make sure that the, the world don't know that this is true so Satan can get your soul. So you can make a mockery when it says the most high is not mocked. You sitting here despising this word. And this word is, 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 is light. This word right here. Get Jeremiah 6 and 10. You can't despise this word right here. This is going to help you see. This is going to get you that spirit. Mm -hmm. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 6, verse 10. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? 
Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. They don't have no delight in this word. You got to delight in this word so you could deal with the most high power and you can see that you're not falling for, the, for, these, for this finance destruction. Go back to where, what you had. Book of Exodus, chapter uh, 3 and verse 17. Mm -hmm. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt. Nope, jumping down to verse 18. And they shall hearken to, the, to thy voice, and thou shalt come, thou and the elders of Israel, unto the king of Egypt. And ye shall say unto him, The Lord God of the Hebrews hath met with us, and now let us go. We beseech thee three days journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Most High our power. Our power. That's our power. Go to uh, chapter 4. Let's see. Let's see this miracle that was going on with Moses. Let's get four, uh, 1 through 6. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 4, verse 1. Through 7. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is it? What is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground. And it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. And the Most High said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand, and, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand, and caught it. And it became his rod in his hand. That they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the power of Abraham, the power of Isaac, the power of Jacob, have appeared unto thee. And the Most High said, Furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. Put your hand into your bosom, uh-huh. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. Uh-huh, so he was a black man. It came out leprous as snow. It didn't come out white on white. It came out black, uh, and then white as snow. More color. Now, let's get Exodus uh, 17. Let's bring that out from the top. You want to finish with 7? Uh, come verse 7 and he said put thine hand into thy bosom again and he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom and behold it was turned again as his other flesh mm -hmm. and what was his other flesh melanated right melanin what are we going? Uh, uh, Exodus 17 This is the book of Exodus, chapter 17, verse 1. And all, the con and all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys according to the commandment of the Most High and pitched in Rephidim. And there was no water for the people to drink. Wherefore the people did chide with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why chide ye with me? Wherefore do ye tempt the Lord? And the people thirsted there for water. And the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto this people? They be almost ready to stone me. And the Most High said unto Moses, Go, go on before the people. And take with thee of the elders of Israel thy rod, wherewith thou smotest the river, take in thine hand, and go. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon this rock, upon the rock, and, and Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did, and Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of this place. Masa and Mar Maribia, Maribah, because of the chiding of the children of Israel and because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Is the Lord among us or not, man? What's up? Is the Lord with us? That's just like our people today, right? Man, let us hear what y'all mean. Okay, yeah, yeah, all right. The Lord, okay. Okay. Because Jacob seeketh the sign. We always want to show us. We don't want to dig and do work. 
you know, information. We just want someone to just come and just give it to us, right? Not all of us, most of us, right? Uh, finish reading. Verse 8. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel and Rephidim. So the Amalekites started. We was on our way out, and they came to fight with us. No, y'all ain't getting up out of here. Those Amalekites, the sons of Esau, the ones ruling the world today, the ones that's, that's telling you to, to get your juice, the one that's put ropes on your neck, the ones that's financed the ships, the ones that's giving you Planned Parenthood, the ones that's that's giving you your edu your miseducation, the one that's giving you your student loans you can't never pay back, the ones that's giving you your interest rates, the ones uh, opening those those borders for drugs to come to your communities. Yeah, those Amalekites, the same ones that's <laughs> give me more, D. What, what, what? Putting tax on the banks, the banks own the houses, the real estate, all that. Con, the ones saying that they're the Jew, that they're Jewish, the ones saying that, right? But not giving you, just like in the law, that after seven years, you're supposed to forgive that debt. No, y'all keep rolling it over. You own the banks, and, the, and then the banks are backed and owned by the IRS. Y'all are the ones that own it all, the Amalekites. What were they doing with us leaving Egypt? Let's get into that. Finish reading. Verse 9. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out. Fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with, the, and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. Mm -hmm. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hand, but Moses' hands were heavy, and they they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat there thereon, and Aaron and Hur stayed up in his hand. And the one on the side on the one side, and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek. And his people, and his people with the edge of the sword. Getting that busy. That's why they want to tear us down. They know what will happen if the 12 tribes of Israel was to come up against any of these rulers of this world. That's why they got to use that psychological and spiritual damage. Getting you Because they know they can't deal with us head up. Finish reading. Verse 14. If we was all together. Uh -huh. And the Lord said unto Moses, write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Cut it off. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Ahianissus. For he said, Because the Lord hath sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. And there's a most high prophecy, right? Aren't you at war with Amalek from generation to generation? Isn't he at war with them? Don't you think us as a people would have been done a long time ago? With all the, the destruction that they have for you, all the stumbling blocks in this world, and you're still here through all these different campaigns from ancient times, but the times that we can remember just after the boats, your 60s, your 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, all this drill music, all these young, these young men out here destroying themselves, just seeking nothing but the vain glory, losing their lives. Losing their lives at a young age. Not valuing friendship. Backdooring your friends. Setting up each other. For that face with, with, with masses, for that dollar bill with masses face on it. Your dead presidents. For their money. That don't really mean nothing to get your soul. Now, let's get some history on that. Let's get. Uh, let's get that in. Uh, we in the Josephus, Judai historian Josephus, that was taken to Rome and then uh, after the, that seen the fall of Jerusalem in seventy A.D. That 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 wrote about our ancient history. Let's get a uh, one fifteen on 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 on. Uh, no, not that, but page one fifteen. Yeah. Let's get more on this war with the Amalekites. What did he have to say about the war? That he knew about, that he was writing about, the history before him. It says, How the Am Amalekites and the neighboring nations made war with the Hebrews and were beaten and lost a great part of their army. The name of the Hebrews began already to be everywhere renowned, and rumors about them ran abroad. 
this made the inhabitants of those countries to be in no small fear. Accordingly, they sent ambassadors to one another and exhorted one another to defend themselves and to try to destroy these men. Those that induced the rest to do so were such as inhabited Gobaladis and Petra. Petra. Look at our five Bible artifacts video to the Spirit of the Most High. Bringing that out. Petra Jordan today. More facts telling you that they dwelt there. Same monuments that you see in all your European uh, societies today. Uh huh. They were called Amalekites and were the most warlike of the nations that lived around there. Mm -hmm. And whose things exhorted one another and their neighbors to go to this war against the Hebrews. Mm. Telling them that an army of strangers and such a one as had run away from the slavery under the Egyptians lay in wait to ruin them lay in wait to ruin them which army they were not in common sense and regarded to their own safety to overlook but to crush them before they gather strength and come to be in, in prosperity and perhaps attack them first in hostile manner a presuming as presuming upon our inaction not attacking them before and that we ought to avenge ourselves of them for what they have done in the wilderness but that but that this cannot be so well done when they have once laid their hands on our cities and our goods that those who try to crush a power in its first rise are wiser than those that try to put a stop to its progress when it is become formable for these the last seem to be angry only at the flourishing of others but the former do not leave any room for their enemies to become troublesome to them after they had sent such embassies to the neighboring nations and among one another they resolved to attack the Hebrews in battle mm -hmm. They kept it going. Get the next page. Just bringing out more history when we was leaving Egypt. How they was trying to get us the same thing today. What's the pharaohs doing? Trying to get the children today with the sauce. Georgia guy stones reducing world population to 500 million. We ain't, we, we're not telling tales about this stuff. They got an oath with their guy Lucifer. Doing a 9-11 pretext to go and... and, and and steal the, the, those lands in the so-called Middle East to get everyone with their financial banking system to bring forth the mark of the beast in these last days. Oh, they've been playing. Remember on that, what, what's that movie on, on, on with, with Denzel? We said, I've been playing it all week, son. They've been playing this for thousands of years. This ain't nothing new. This war ain't nothing new. Yeah, don't you ever find out you's an Israelite. You better keep falling for the programming. Don't you be out there telling them. You better be out there. No, you better say you a Muslim. You better say you atheist. You better say you in Christianity. Don't you ever talk about, don't you ever talk about you a Hebrew boy? Use a Negro. Use a good old boy. Keep killing your people. Keep killing yourself. Keep taking on drugs. That's what they want you. They don't want you up in this. They don't want you exposing thousands of years of lies. They don't want you looking clean and healthy. They want you looking weak. They want you disrespecting your mama. They want you disrespecting your children. They want you walking out of your family as a as a as an Israelite man. They don't want you up here with strength. You they worst enemy when you come like this. Or are you being weak? You gonna fall for the program. You don't want to change your life. You don't want this kingdom. You that weak? Ain't no good man left. You better stand up out there. You, you, you Israelite kings and queens. Go to Jeremiah 16 and 19. Jeremiah chapter 16 verse 19 O Lord my strength and my fortress and my refugee in the day of affliction the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say surely our fathers 
have inherited lies. Y'all, y'all forefathers have inherited lies out there. Get wisdom of Solomon chapter five from the top. Your forefathers have inherited lies, thinking you just came over here off a boat and you got all this destruction for nothing. You just, you just born in America. You just here to just to be a part of the circus on social media. Uh huh. It's the book of wisdom, wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 5, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him. They've afflicted us, so we're standing in boldness. Uh -huh. And made no account of his labors. Mm -hmm. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. Oh, and they troubled. They know. Clock is ticking. Great reset. Uh, another lie. They're waking up. It's about that time. We've had 2,000 years to get it done. It didn't work. Uh -huh. And shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. So far beyond all that they looked for. And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, This was he whom we had sometimes in derision and proverb of reproach. We've had them as a reproach and a proverb throughout this earth. We've had them destroyed. This is he, uh huh? We fools accounted his life madness. We accounted his life, their life for madness. Them, they madness. Walking in these stores with their pants to their ankles. Look at them, they look crazy. Bonnets on their head in the store right now, wearing pajamas all in Walmart. Look at them, we were kind of that life of madness. They stay getting in something. We just wanna we just wanna live further out. Oh, they're starting to move in. Get us away from them. Finish reading. And his end to be without honor. Mm -hmm. How is he numbered among the children of God? These are the people? Uh-huh. And his lot is amongst the saints. His, he's one of the saints. He's an Israel. They're the devils are the Israelites. Uh huh. Therefore, have we erred from the way of the truth, and the light of righteousness have not shined unto us. The sun of righteousness rose not up upon us. We wearied ourselves in the way of the of wickedness and destruction. Yea, we have gone through deserts where they where there lay no way. But as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. They don't know the ways of the Lord. They done had 2,000 years trying to be our priest in, these, in, in Jehovah Witness Catholic Church, Joseph Smith, Mormons knocking on your doors. Have you heard about the gospel? Where was this gospel? Uh-huh. What have pride profited us? Or what good have riches with our vaunting brought us? All the riches, let's leave it there. It hasn't brought them nothing. It ain't brought them nothing. Finish what you had in, in that, yeah. Going back to the Josephus. It says, so the armies joined battle, and it came to a close fight, hand to hand, both sides showing great uh, eagerness and encouraging one another. And indeed, while Moses stretched out his hand toward the heaven, the Hebrews were too hard for the uh, Amalekites. Too hard for them, just like we are now. Just like we are now. Now, let's get some let's get what Josephus has to say on the Hebrews. Let's go to page 95 in that. What does he have to say about the Hebrews, huh? Uh bop, bop, bop. It said, which pharaohs ruled? The Egyptian kings at the time of Joseph's adventures in Egypt, the oppression of the Israelites, and the Exodus are not identified in Josephus or the Old Testament. It is Tempting, however, to assign Joseph to the time of the Hyksos, domination of the Nile Delta during the second intermediate period of Egyptian yeah, history. Yeah, because if you try to go to Wikipedia, they'll say, oh, well, we can't. We, we know that there's a people that was ruling uh, these, these, these people called shepherd people for 200 years. But well, we don't want to say that they're the Hyksos, but they're kind of, we think they're the Hyksos. No, y'all know the Israelites was there for 200 years. Bring that out. When such Asiatic rulers might more readily have welcomed Israelites than if native Egyptians had been in charge. In that case, the later king who did not know Joseph, referenced Exodus 1 and 8, may have come from an Egyptian dynasty that expelled the Hyksos and launched the new kingdom or empire period. But when, but when the Exodus... But when was the Exodus, like you? In 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 1, it is stated that Solomon began construction of the temple in the fourth year of his reign, 
961 BC, which is defined as the 480th year after the Exodus. This would place the Exodus in 1000, 1, or the, nope, it's 441 BC, still like it, with Pharaoh Am, Amhotep II, 1450, 1425 BC. Mm -hmm. Now, last scripture, get second address, because we know after fighting the Amalekites, we was on our way, and we got the law, Exodus, Exodus 20. Exodus 19, when we got that right. Last scripture. Let's get uh, 2 Edges chapter 3, verse 15 to 19. Come on. This is the book of 2 Edges chapter, chapter 3, verse 15. And madest an everlasting covenant with him, promising him that thou wouldest never forsake his seed. And unto him thou gavest Isaac, and unto Isaac also thou gavest Jacob and Esau. As for Jacob, thou didst choose him to thee, and put by Esau. And so Jacob became a great multitude. And it came to pass that when thou lettest his seed out of Egypt, thou broughtest them up to the, to the Mount Sinai. And bowing the heavens, and bow, yeah, and bowing the heavens, thou didst set fast the earth, movest the whole world, and madest the depths to tremble. And to trouble us, the men of that age. It's talking about when he gave us the law on Mount Sinai, Exodus 20, uh huh. And thy glory went through four gates of fire, and of earthquake, and of wind, and of cold, that thou mightest give the law unto the seed of Jacob. That's why we are special people, because he gave his law to us leaving, leaving Egypt. He didn't give his law to no one else. They need, they need our law to even establish some type of judicial system. And now they're going against it and defiling, telling you that evil is good. But we're trying to build it on that at first, right? Where do you think they get all the terms? They get it all out the Bible. Uh -huh. They don't know how to, 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 in order to have some order. They got it from the Bible. So with that, with our forefathers, the Israelites being in Egypt, leaving Egypt to get the law, them trying to destroy us coming up out of Egypt, the Amalekites, and the pharaohs, nothing new under the sun. Stay prayed up. Keep the most high in Christ. Giving all honor, glory, and praise to the most high. Ahaya by Shem Yashai Kodasha Wak. Shalom. Shalom. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart, and failing of eyes, and sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shalt have none assurance of thy life. In the morning thou shalt say, Would God it were even, and at even thou shalt say, would God it were morning, for the fear of thine heart wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord. And I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess flicked thee. And I will save her that halteth, and gather her that was driven out. And I will give them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. At that time, while I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth.